So for this project, I'm using red oak that I got at the big box store. It is quarter inch thick by three and a half inches and fairly decent stuff. And for the price, you just can't beat it for the, the time needed to create it. I'm marking off squares that are three and a half inches by three and a half inches so that these will be the sides of the box. On the bench hook, I can then just cut it down to size and uh, go from there. Next up, I want to work on the dovetails, but I need to actually lay them out. So I'm putting them in sequential order so that the grain will wrap around the boards. And then put a piece of tape across them and label them out left, right, back, and front so that I know that they will all match. Onto the dovetail cutting, uh, just lay this out with a square. I will be going into greater detail later about dovetails as I'm going to be doing a couple videos on dovetails alone. But uh, for this process, I like doing a lot of gang cutting. So that's why I put all of the uh, front and back sides together and then can cut them with my uh, Bearcat dovetail saw. Love this saw. A lot of fun to use. Then for gang cutting out the waste, I actually just stack them up on the bench. It makes it fairly easy to uh, cut them out with a chisel and uh, clean them so you can do them quickly and using the same maneuver over and over and over again. It's one of the uh, few ways that you can actually save a little bit of time uh, with hand tools. Um, I will be covering this more when I'm talking about uh, dovetails as well, so for now, just enjoy the view. Okay, enough of that. Let's go on to transferring the marks from the tails to the pins. This uh, can be a little tedious because you have to do it for each every piece, and uh, there really isn't a way of gang cutting the pins. So one by one, you cut them down to your marking gauge line, clean them out, and uh, then just like with the tails, gang them up and uh, cut them out with a chisel. Simple process, just uh, a lot of little dovetails to make uh, a few boxes. Next up, let's start on some of the carving. Uh, I put down masking tape onto the piece and then use this glue stick to put the pattern down onto the box. Uh, a little bit of pressure and it holds in place. This way I can peel it off when I'm done carving. A really nice process that I have uh, come to use for most all of my carving patterns. I wanted to do a little bit of fret saw work in this so that the light can come through the box and I put that on the bird's mouth on my bench and uh, use the coping saw or uh, fret saw to clean them out. And this is a fairly therapeutic process and I've, I've come to enjoy it. I'm going to be doing more fret saw work in the future. But then once they have been cut out, I put some double-sided tape and secure them down to a board. Uh, this allows me to then carve on the bench top and I can secure this board to the bench top rather than having to secure these little pieces. This is a, a V-tool that I recently picked up, and I absolutely love it. It's a lot better than my other one. But uh, this is a simple way of doing carving, and uh, following these lines, you can get a generally good image uh, very quickly, and uh, you get this hand-carved look with uh, a simple tool. I'll leave a description to that tool in uh, the description below so you can see that. Next up, it's gluing the dovetails. Now, because these are so small, uh, they really don't need much pressure, but uh, they do need to be held in place. The boards will warp just a little bit. So I put a bunch of C-clamps on it, and each of the C-clamps actually have very little pressure that they're applying. It's just enough to hold them in place and keep the joint tight while the glue dries. And uh, yeah, it looks like there's a lot of clamps, but really there isn't that much pressure on the box. Now I want to make the bottom for it, and I put that onto the uh, quarter inch stock I have and trace out the two sides that still need to be cut. And with the bench hook, I can uh, cut them to shape. Now I'm going to leave these very large, uh, probably about a, a whole sixteenth of an inch large, so that I can trim them to fit precisely into the box. And I can do that on the shooting board. It makes it very simple and easy to uh, clean up the end and uh, really make them look nice. This is a, a procedure I'm using more and more, and a shooting board is just... It's wonderful for trimming things up and making them exactly the size you need to be. And I'm slowly checking the size and putting it into the box, making sure it fits, and going back and cleaning up again until I get a really nice tight fit. Then I can put it into the box. A little bit of glue and slide in the fit. And it uh, goes in perfectly. I love the sound of a box when it squeezes together just right. 
Now all of the dovetails were left a little bit proud, uh, so I can trim them off. And actually I had a little bit proud on a couple of the surfaces with the, the actual side. Trim it up and uh, smooth them out. Boiled linseed oil is the base finish on it, but I don't want to put paste wax because there's a lot of ins and outs. So I decided to use a, uh, a spray of shellac. that allows it to get into those holes in the carving a little bit better. And you end up with a, a fairly nice surface. In between the coats of shellac, I actually used the back of the sandpaper as I had it on hand. Sometimes I will use um, steel wool or paper bag, but the back of the sandpaper works just fine to give it that nice polished feel. And there it is. Oh yeah, I like it. There's a little candle box. Now many of you may have seen the video I did a while ago on making a similar one to this for my wife. And it was a little bit more of an artistic video and not as much a how-to. And so I just wanted to kind of go through some of the steps that I used to make that box and making another one. So this was kind of a, a little bit different rift on that video. And if you haven't seen that one, you can go click on the link and, and see that one. But this is, this is great for a gift or something of that nature. Um, if you wanted to, you can make a little cutout in the bottom to seat the candle in. Um, I use little tall glass um, votive candles and they work really well on this. The holes let you see light that pours through from the side and and they, uh, they look fairly good. And uh, a lot of people just like the, the simple carving and the nature of it. It looks good on a shelf. So I hope you like this. It was a fun little project. Uh, it's one that uh, kind of stretches a lot of different skills in one little project with dovetails and carving and fretwork and joinery. And it's just a, a good project for someone to jump into some new things. So I hope you like this. It was a fun one for me to make. Uh, if you did like the video, please hit like and think about subscribing. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the main reason why this channel is still going today. So thank you for that. If you want to find out more, you can click the link over here. And also, if you like this video, feel free to check out one of my others. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.